Hello everyone, it's Spawnpoint and today I'm showing you some of the best accessories that you can buy for the Nintendo OLED Switch. These accessories range from $10 to $200 or pounds and will hopefully give you some awesome ideas for yourself or gift ideas for others. As always, I've linked to everything in the description if you wanted to check them out. So one of the first things that I add and one that I would recommend fitting before anything else is a screen protector. There's nothing worse than picking it up one day and finding a scratch or a scuff on the screen. So I'm using a Spigen one here which is probably one of the easiest that you can fit. It comes with this hard shell and it clips over the top and it lets you line it up and fit it perfectly. And I've actually been using these Spigen screen protectors for all of my devices including my phones, my iPads and even in my car. And using a screen protector will keep it looking clean and scratch free and they usually only cost about £10 or $10. Now when it comes to playing on the Switch, you can either use it handheld where you use the Joy-Cons on the side of the screen, you can place the screen on a tabletop and remove the Joy-Cons and play it like a mini controller, or you can connect it to your TV using the dock and then again use the Joy-Cons. Now the Switch does come with this little Joy-Con grip that lets you slide the Joy-Cons in and basically use it as a controller. It's okay, but it's not really the best looking or feeling controller when gaming. So this is why I would recommend picking up a separate controller instead. Now you've got the official Nintendo Switch Pro Controller which is probably the most likely popular choice. Or we've got some other decent options from Power A. Now the first one that I wanted to show you is the Power A Fusion Pro Controller which is an absolute beast. And as soon as you open up the box and you can see the carry case that comes in you can tell this is a premium product. So you've got this hard carry case or this shell that it comes in. Then inside you've got the controller which is in black, a USB-C charging cable, some spare thumbsticks and a removable faceplate in white. But as soon as I took this out of the case, it reminded me of the Xbox Elite controller. The quality of the case, the controller feels premium. This isn't a cheap and tacky controller. It's also got wireless and wired play, an internal rechargeable battery, mappable paddles on the rear, and a swappable thumbsticks on the front. It might look overkill for the Switch, but if you want something that feels more like a real controller, this is definitely the one to go for. And I love the fact that the front plates can be removed too, which is very similar to the scuff controllers that we've seen. This means that you can swap them out depending on your setup or preference. I usually like the all black look, but this looks super clean in white and it matches the Switch. Now, if you don't want to spend nearly $100 on a controller for the Switch, there are some cheaper alternatives. So here we've got the normal Power A Switch controller. This offers the same functionality in terms of it feeling like a normal controller, but is lacking all of the pro features. So that includes no removable faceplates, no paddles, no inbuilt battery, and it feels very light and cheap by comparison. For children or your player too, I think this is perfect, but if you want that premium feel, I would recommend going for that pro model. But either way, playing with a controller feels 100 times better than using the Joy-Cons. Now if you play the Switch a lot in handheld mode, you might find that after an hour or so your hands or your thumbs start to ache. I feel like my thumbs are too close to the edge of the Switch, so as I'm trying to play it actually feels uncomfortable. But fortunately that's where these grips come in handy. And this is from Satisfy, so this is a hard plastic shell with rubber feet and rubber pads on the back. So you just grab the Switch and you slide it in from the top and as you can see it holds it in place here. And now when you're holding it, it feels in my opinion far more balanced and easier to use. I actually find that without the grip I get cramp and my thumbs start to ache, whereas when I use the grip it feels far more natural and ergonomic. And the fact that it comes in white also means it kind of looks on brand with the white Switch. They do also do a black version too, and it is designed for both the OLED version as well as the original Switch. It definitely adds more bulk to the overall weight and the look of the console, but I think it's worth it for the extra grip that you get. Now you'll also notice that you get these little plastic feet on the bottom, and that's where you can stand it up vertically. And obviously the Switch has its own tabletop stand on the rear, but that cannot be used when you're using the grip. Next up, which is also from Satisfy, are these cases. So whether you're taking your Switch on the move or you just want to store it away somewhere safe, these cases are awesome. Now I've got two sizes here. We've got the large one that lets you store the console, cables, accessories and 20 games. Plus it's got different zip compartments for other items that you might need to carry. This is really nice and it looks and feels premium, especially with the soft felt like material on the inside, the hard shell and the ultra sturdy strap on the side. If you needed something to take all of your Switch gear with you on holiday say, this is definitely a great example. And then there's the smaller one which is the main one that I use daily. This will only store the Switch and up to 10 games in it as there are no extra compartments. But what I like about it is the hard shell and the low profile that it has. Especially when you compare it to the larger one, it looks incredibly slim. But there's one thing that both of these have in common and that's the fact that if you're using the Satisfy grips they will fit in these cases. But if you're not planning on using the grips I would recommend picking up one of these cases instead and these are from TomTok. I've actually been using their cases for years for my laptops and my MacBook. So I would definitely recommend picking one of these up if you don't need to use the grips. 
Another must buy accessory for the Switch is a decent headset. So you can either use a wired or wireless headset, which means you can use practically anything that you would like. If you're looking for a cheap and decent headset, I would recommend picking up the Astro A10s. These are still one of my all time favorites that are wired, cheap, and have a nice flip up mic if you don't need to use it. The fact that they have a 3.5mm jack means you can use them with pretty much every device that supports it the Switch, Xbox, PS5, or iPad. Another option is to use a wireless headset instead. So I'm using the SteelSeries Arctic 7Ps on my PS5, but as they come with a USB-C dongle, I can actually connect that to my Switch instead. Now, once a dongle is inserted, it will pair straight away and they are good to go. So these are my favorite wireless headphones right now. But if you wanted a budget-friendly version, I would go for the SteelSeries Arctic 1 instead. But as the OLED switch also supports Bluetooth, you can use any headset that is Bluetooth compatible, and these will pair directly to the switch, there is no need to use a dongle. Depending on how many games you play or download, you might find the internal 64GB of storage fills up pretty quickly, and that's where these SD cards come in handy. You can buy and install either a micro SDHC or micro SDXC cards with up to 2TB of storage, and that's huge. Now I've gone for a 128GB card, as I don't think I'll need much more for at least the next couple of years, but these Nintendo branded cards come in other sizes as well, including 256 and 512GB. The original Switch comes with 32GB of internal storage, while the new OLED Switch has 64GB. Whether you fill those up first and need an SD card is down to how many games you install and which games they are. Some games are tiny and only take up a couple of gigabytes, while others can take between 10 and 20GB each. But as I say, it's always better to have too much storage than not enough. And if you're playing FPS games on the Switch, or you want to have an improved grip on the thumbsticks, you might want to buy these as well. These are called performance thumb grips, which fit over the top of the thumbsticks and either increase the height or change the overall shape. Unfortunately, the ones that I have here only fit the official Nintendo Switch Pro controller, so I can't actually test these out on the controllers that I have. But feeling them, they feel nice out of the box, plus this little tin that they come in is pretty cool. But I have used grips like this for years, especially those from Control Freak. I used to have them fitted to my PlayStation 4 controller, and they can completely change the way that you play a game. So if you play FPS games or you find the normal sticks are a little bit too short, these are definitely worth checking out. Now when it comes to charging the Switch, the chances are you'll probably use the provided dock. And this is great if you want to charge it while you're gaming on your TV, but if you need to charge it while you're playing it in handheld mode, you might struggle. And this is why I would recommend picking up a USB-C cable that will let you charge it while you're away from the dock. And the fact that it is just a USB-C cable, the chances are you've probably got a spare one lying around that you could use instead. So what is your favourite accessory for the Switch? For me it's got to be either the Pro Controller for TV gaming or the Grip for handheld, as these two are literally game changers. Right, if you drop a best Switch accessories in the comments, I will know you've made it right to the end. And if you like this today, why don't you check out my full Switch unboxing and review video next. Thank you for watching, until next time.